Welcome to the Clear Path Training Podcast. I'm Nick Smith, and together with Ryan Morris, we're diving into tips, tools, and ideas that help entrepreneurs and professionals reach success despite mental challenges and any disabilities they may face. We don't hold back here, so if you're not into strong language and an unfiltered view of mental health, then this may not be the podcast for you. A bit of housekeeping. This podcast is for informational and educational purposes only and should not be considered therapy or any form of treatment. We're not able to respond to specific questions or comments about personal situations, appropriate diagnosis or treatment, or otherwise provide any clinical opinions. We say that for the licensed professionals. If you think you need immediate assistance, call your local emergency number or the mental health crisis hotline. That for the licensed professionals. If you think you need immediate assistance, call your local emergency number or the mental health crisis hotline. Good morning. Can you see us? Are you on the phone only? Oh, I'm on the phone. Yeah, I'm on the phone. Okay. Perfect. Well, I'm going to stop recording video then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can you see our faces, or are you on the Zoom call? No, I'm on. I'm on the call. I just dialed. Uh, I just dialed in. Gotcha. Perfect. How are we doing? Doing okay. You want to sell me on that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a. It's it's my Monday, so I, I work on Sundays. So oh, it's, okay. it's my Monday. Okay. Did you uh, did you lock out some time today for this call? Are you good? I did. Yeah. Nice to meet you, too, Nick. So, do you want to tell me what's going on? I I saw your request and I read through your answers, and so yeah, what did, yeah. So, what did you feel me that? well, you know, I, I mean, I'm at a point now, right, where I'm, I'm kind of kind of lost in the mix, right? Because I've been doing the same thing for a, a number of years, um, and I keep coming back to it, right, out of out of comfort, out of fear out of I, I don't know what but I, I feel like there's there's more that I should be doing but something is holding me back from taking that next step you know and it's a, it, I mean it's I don't know if it's just me overthinking things or it's me you know realizing that if I took if I do take these next steps I'm either walking into an unknown and it scares the hell out of me or am I to make some you know drastic jump, succeed, and leave people behind? So I'm just kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of dealing with that. Both, so, both responses there to deal with fear, right? Yeah. Fear of leaving others behind and fear of, you know, maybe not being able to do it. Is that accurate? Right, yeah. Yeah, well, and, and I've done that. You know, I jumped into something yep. a couple of years ago that I – I told myself I was ready for, told myself I was qualified for, and I failed miserably. And it, it kind of ruined me for a little bit. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was hard to deal with. So, yeah, I'm just trying to, trying to get past that, that fear, I guess, of, you know, falling back into failure. Because I don't want, I, don't, I you know, I, I've done enough of that. I'm, I'm ready to, you know, start succeeding and getting further in life. Are you, willing, are you willing to open up about you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm an open book. Okay, okay we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to dive into you uh, because that's where it is. It's, it. it's going to be inside of yeah. you. So why don't you fill me in right. on what you're thinking of doing, though? Well, um, so I mean, I'm, okay. um, and I do call center operations, and there's, a, there's an opportunity that is potentially going to be on the table soon, um, which moves me into a spotlight. It'd, it'd be working with our communications team, um, you know, putting together all of our corporate communications for for executive leadership. Also, you know, all of our call center employees, all of our headquarters employees, each and every corporate communication that goes out goes through this team. Um, I was talking to the manager of the team I've known for a long time time and you know he without telling me that you know too many details he said you know there's 
there's something coming up and you'd be perfect for it. And hearing that again, just kind of, while it excites me, because I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready to jump into something else. It, it, it talks to that fear, that, that fear that I've always held on to, that one thing that always holds me back from jumping into that next level. So, it, you know, as I process it, because it's been a couple of weeks since that conversation, as I process it, the, the excitement gets swallowed up by all of that fear. So I'm, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll see. Would you, would you say it's more insecurity than fear? Uh, yeah, uh, that, that's, that sounds fair. Okay, you, you don't know? have to agree with um, me, but, but what I'm no, hearing no, is I, that there's a level that you could perform at. There's a lot of responsibility in that. But anytime you look at that, no, 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 I, is that there's a level that you could perform at. There's a lot of responsibility in that. But anytime you look at that, based, you go back into your insecurities, and from those insecurities, you, you feel inadequate, inept, not capable in a sense that sounds accurate <laughs> it does okay. what did i hate to do on that uh, yeah Absolutely. okay so so we hide we tend to hide our insecurities behind confidence so on the surface nobody would ever know they wouldn't be able to see right. that right but inside of you you're spun up yeah okay and then on top Absolutely. of that there's another fear a separate fear so the, the fear is stemming from the insecurities. It's future-based, right? What if I can't mm -hmm. do this? What if I'm a, a fraud right. or a phony or a facade, right? Right. Uh, the right. other fear is what if I do step into it and I start advancing and growing? What about those I might leave? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And it's something that I've used a lot. You know, I mean, it was starting, it was starting at a young age, you know, I mean, it was, I went through a lot as a child and I was always looked on, I was, I was looked upon by my family as, you know, the one to hold it all together. Right. So in doing that, I, I conditioned myself to not go after the things that I wanted because I got to stay back and hold things together for everybody. And, you know, that, that's been a part of my, my operation for as long as I can remember. Let's go back in time. You ready? A little bit? Yep. Yeah, Tell me about absolutely. your family. Tell me the dynamic. Sure. So, I um, was raised by a single mother. Uh, my, my dad left when I was, I was um, but when I was about seven years. Um, I, was, I was under a year. I was under a year old when my dad left. Okay. Okay. So, so mom's single. So I, yep. Single mom, um, she, uh, she got into some trouble um, when I was about seven. Okay. She, started, she started dealing with some, some unsavory people. She got into some things that got her in over her head, and she went to prison for a number of years when I was seven years old. Okay. Um, I'm also a middle child. So uh, my, my older brother years? was, there's three of us. My older right. brother, he was shaken by that whole, that whole arrest, right? And I, that's where I stepped into taking care of everybody, you know, because I had a level head about the whole thing, even at seven years old. Um, so, um, so I was, I was left kind of just holding on to everybody and making sure that things were working. Um, and then, you know, fast forward a number of years, my mom gets out. And I feel this, this need to help her, help fix her, you know, mm -hmm. because it's, I, I, it's just who I am, right? I, I fix everybody's problems. And in doing that, you know, I, I limited myself, you know, I, I passed up on a cost of you, right? You take care of others at the Absolutely. cost of you, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Ryan, you and I had this conversation yesterday, which is pretty timely. It's yeah, we're, we're very similar in that regard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So a, a lot of people are, you know, they, they are so selfless that they give everything, everything without regard to themselves, and it's damaging. You know, right. so they, 
they end up not advancing and growing the way they could because I can't, I can't leave others behind. I can't be the one that can't be counted on anymore. Right. Um, so, so when we visit the past like this, if we're going to go back to you at seven years old, which is the time that you start developing behaviors, that's where you develop impulse yep. control. That's where you develop your phobias, all of that from about seven to 14, your, your life was disrupted. Your mom oh, went yeah. to prison, pretty traumatic deal. This isn't to say that you have to stay in that behavior, but it's just to recognize right. where it's coming from. Okay. Sure. How old are you now? 38. 38. From 7 to 38, 31 years of practice of being the savior of your family, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yes. And, and also looking after, are you married, single? I am. I'm married. Okay. We have one. Okay. And, and so you feel the sense of, of needing to look after everybody, even if it means you uh -huh. need to let some things go. Right. 31 years of practice doing that. You think you're pretty good at it? Oh, I'm probably a master at it. <laughs> <laughs> <You're the best. laughs> we need to get you if a I That's a superpower. I'd probably have a doctorate. <laughs> <laughs> we might get you a doctorate of selflessness. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, but, but recognize where the behavior comes from and what you're what you're going to be competing with. Can I, can I explain your brain a little bit? Do you have a, a pretty good grasp mm -hmm. on how the brain works and how neurons work? And yep. You, yep. You want me to go into it? Oh, no. I have your side and you know, build that understanding even more. So I'm all, I'm all in. Just understanding your brain that you've got neural connections that create all of the behaviors and thinking patterns that you have. Okay? They help you store it, make it automatic so you don't have to think about it. So you have what's called a default mode network, which is where you perform at an unconscious level. So when you're not conscious, you go unconscious. And it's just as active as the conscious level, right? So you're driving a car, you're doing these behaviors. It's so automated that there is no thinking involved. It's just intuitive. Half right into it, right? Right. So when a neuron is, is connected, when it's connected to another pathway, what it does is it strengthens. So with use, uh, your glial cells come in and start supporting that neuron to make it more and more efficient. So the fastest nerve in your body runs at 268 miles an hour and the slowest is at one mile an hour. Right. But the thing that okay. differentiates speed on those, but the thing that okay. differentiates feed on those is the myelin sheath that goes around the neuron. And so what that does is it insulates it. So every time it wraps it and insulates it, it makes it faster and faster and faster until the point that it becomes unconscious. It's easy. You don't even think about it. Right. And then you have other structures that hold it in place to clean it all up. And so that's where sleep is really important. So in a way, low level brain damage is sleep is the repair cycle. So it just goes and cleans right. up those behaviors. Right? So now you've got 31 years of a neural connection of selflessness and people, I'm going to call it people pleasing and putting on this facade mm -hmm. that you're strong when inside you're insecure. You're a seven year old kid trying to do a man's job. But that seven year old kid is still in there in the neural connection that you created that long ago of I need to care for others before I care for myself. And you've strengthened it, and you've hit that path so many to strengthen it, and you've hit that path so many times that it's going to come up automatically and easily. And mm -hmm. another side of you is looking at that going, what's wrong with me? Right. And are you okay if I use strong language, or is that going to bother you? Oh, yeah. No, I'm, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Please, by all means. You're saying to yourself, <laughs> why am I so fucked up, in a sense? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, for me, I don't, I don't swear just to swear. Sometimes I do actually, <laughs> but, it, but it, it pushes a point, you know, it's like, it emphasizes yeah. this idea that I'm messed up, that I'm different from everybody else. Right. You're not, you're not broken. You've, you've had some developmental things that pushed you to act this way. You've gotten very good at them. And it's going to take some, and it's going to take some consciousness to change them. You can't do this unconsciously. 
And I'll promise you, you're going to revert back to the old behaviors pretty frequently initially. You're going to have to push through that because what you're going to do is establish a new neural connection and you're going to have to strengthen that. And then that, what that'll do is the other one will weaken. It'll atrophy in a degree. And this one will be mm -hmm. strength. So it's like the muscles you use strengthen the ones you don't they weaken, just like the body. Mm -hmm. So you have this insecurity inside of you in the facade of a confident man that can do anything. Even your manager sees you as confident, and inside you're, you're insecure as hell. Right. So you're afraid that he might, he might actually see you. Is that accurate? Yeah. That's, that's, that's 100% accurate. Now you don't have to agree yeah. with me. You can tell me I'm wrong. No, no, no that's, I, I can't tell you you're wrong because then I'd be lying. <laughs> that's what you're competing with. The fear, right. the fear of being seen for what you really are. Right. You're scared. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's accurate. Tell me, tell me what you're hearing. Feed, feed that back. Well, well, I'm I'm hearing, honestly, I'm hearing things that I've that I've said to myself before, right? Where I am, I'm. I'm definitely afraid of somebody seeing through this facade that I put on, right? I, I put on this, this image of this confident person, this person that can get anything done. Okay. You know, eventually I will, but on, you know, and I put that out there and I do yeah. that to defend myself. Yeah. I always have, you know, because I know that while it's okay for me to fail in theory, while, it, while people accept certain levels of failure as opportunities to learn, I see every opportunity of, to fail as an opportunity to let people see the real part of me that's afraid of all of that. You know? So it's almost, I, it's almost like you want to disclose it, and so you do it subtly. So that they can see the real you, but you don't want them to see it at the same time. Right. I don't want somebody to come to me. And, you know, this is, it goes back to that, that people pleasing and that, uh, you know, that need to take care of everything. Right. If I get everything right, if I get tasked with something, even if I don't quite understand it, I'm okay. so afraid to ask questions because I feel that those questions that I'm going to ask, even though they're for clarification and education, they're going to let somebody see that maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Right. So then they call into question everything. <laughs> so this is, yeah. I mean, what you're saying is everything that I have been feeling, I've said it to myself. I just don't know how to break that pattern. That's yeah. my biggest problem is, is getting out of that and being okay with failing to learn. You know, that's the only way we're going to learn is if we fail, right? Nobody right. knows everything on their first go, but I've always felt like I have to. I always have to know everything on my first go because everybody's going to look at me yeah. for the answer. It's almost like I just got a new set of golf clubs. I'm going to go compete with Tiger Woods. Exactly. That's bullshit. It, it is. <laughs> You're absolutely right, but so, it's, it's, so what I hear. Let me let me clarify what I hear in what you're saying is that that you want the easy road, you want the medicine, you want what what's going to fix this in an instant so I can be past this. And and you're saying the answer as you're speaking that. Yeah. Which was what? <laughs> there is no easy fix. Yeah. There's not, you know, I mean, if, if there were an easy fix, we would have found it years ago. Right. But, sure. you know, I keep looking and yeah, I mean, I've always looked for that easy, that easy out, right. The, I want the direct route because a direct route without any roadblocks and, and challenges would then keep that mask mask and keep me from exposing any insecurities.
that you're a so student, even you in my do that you couldn't do that job like what what's to say you're likely more than qualified to do that job yeah i can't see why i'm not because i have done it <laughs> on on certain levels so yeah of course but what's keeping me from making that jump you're in action not that you're in action you're in action right lack of action right your lack of failure your lack of stepping into it and growing into that position that insecure right. child of yours that's inside of you isn't going away anytime soon so can you drive the bus with him on it kicking and screaming all the way through you're gonna have to right i mean that's that's the only way and it's you know I, I i have to i have to recognize that and i have to be okay with those gradual steps into you know into improvement um because but it, it, it's hard to turn that off it is i mean that's that's my number one challenge is turning that off you because assume you all of that oh well, yeah i'm yeah i guess i am <laughs> I just can't shut it off, can I? Have you been able to in the past? Have you been successful at that? Oh, God, no. Ryan, how about no. you? Um, it's it's hard because it's it's learned. You know, some of that's like you said. It's it's, it's I, that's how I was. That's what I learned, and that's how I you know the pattern. It's what I learned, and that's how I you know the pattern. It's it's hard to shut that off. And you have to, you have to learn, um, how to do it and then starve, you know, like you were saying, starve certain behaviors so that they mm -hmm. fade away so that you don't listen to them as much or at all so that you can grow and improve. You know, I looked back just quick and, and you were motherfucker. It's like in high school, you know, like, <laughs> you're, you know, like, uh, like, you were always so positive and optimistic, I, you know, conquering the world, you know, like I never would have thought um, that you had, you know, any of that going on. Like, you no, know, like I, unless you were really close to you, then maybe you would know that. But uh, like, I didn't, you know, and we weren't like best yeah. friends we and all the time, but I saw you at school almost every day, you know? Right. We had yeah. certain, we had yeah. certain classes together and things you know and mutual friends yep. and and yep. i never I never knew that you know and there's a lot of people that don't know you know my my things my demons my weaknesses you know right that, uh that would say the same thing you know but but uh yeah I just wanted to commend you for recognizing that you have those and then also taking that next step to go okay i realize i'm conscious of these problems and these weaknesses now what? What can I do? I want to be better. I don't just want to be status quo. I'm not. I'm not okay right. with. That. You know, that's pretty commendable, man. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's you know, and and full disclosure, you know, in in being completely honest, um, then yeah, not only do I have you know, do I have that it at work, I've got it at home. You know, I mean, yeah, I've got it at home. You know, I mean, yes, if I'm, yes, if I was married, yes, if I had a kid, I'm married to a woman who's 12 years older than I am that has a special needs daughter. I mean, okay. talk about wanting to be a savior, right? I mean, yeah. I, I took on the ultimate instant family at 21. So, you know, the last 17 years have been that savior role at home. Yeah, see, there is nothing wrong with that. I don't see an issue with that. I think it's commendable, like Ryan said. The, the accepting that that's how you show up in life. Like, I do this. The resistance to that is what's going to keep you stuck. I don't want to do this. Right. I can't be this guy. No, you are that right. guy. You've created that pattern in your life so that you are that caretaker. And, man, what a right. trait to have, especially in these times, right, where everybody's so self-centered yeah. and self-absorbed that they don't cut it's a sign of, of who you really are inside.
You want people to be happy. You also mm -hmm. want to be accepted. And so it's amazing right. what to do to be accepted. The oh, yeah. In high school, <laughs> thought you put on to be accepted. That's going to be your new right. title. Motherfucker. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> let's go. I'm ready. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, to, and I did that to be accepted. You know, it, it was, that was the only way for me to survive high school. Because if, if people would have seen the insecure me, I would have been swallowed a lot. Okay. So a survival thing. Yeah. And, and never internal, always external. If other people oh, yeah. can approve me, then I'm okay. Okay. Yep. But never can Zach approve of Zach. No. No, I'm always, you know, it's got to be external. So it's always been like a black hole. I need that validation that I'm doing a good job in serving you, but there's a limit to your capacity to do that. Right. You're finding it. You're, you're reaching it by the anxiety. You're seeing where your limits are. Right. Does this resonate for you? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is huge. You know, I, because I they, I mean, these are things. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, they, I mean these are these are things that you know I've I've known and I've recognized and and just speaking them into existence and out into the world and not just to myself and actually having a conversation with somebody that sees all of that is I mean yeah speaking them into existence and out into the world and not just to myself and actually having a conversation with somebody that sees all of that is I mean yeah this is. This is definitely uh, an eye-opening exchange here. Let me iterate here. You are not broken. Not even the slightest. Yeah. You have some behaviors that you've developed to survive and to be accepted. Yep. Yep. And, and here you're tired. Your battery is draining. You're hitting 38 years old. You have a chance to advance, but then you feel inadequate. Even though your education and experience says that you're more than qualified to take on that position, the insecure right. self inside of you says, I'm a facade, I'm a fake, I'm not being my authentic self. My authentic self. Right. Scared. Yeah. Yeah. What if they see me for who I really am? Right. Nobody's ever going to be adequate. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say one thing that I would that I would say that because um, I felt that same way I've I've I felt like well what if people see that I, you know that all my insecurities and then I've let people down I'm a failure so many people you know relying on me to be the guy or to have the knowledge or to hold things together and the, the truth about it really is and I've I've seen some people on Facebook do this and I and once they kind of let those out that, Hey, look, I'm human. Like, gosh, damn it. I'm human. You know, this right. is my, this is who I am. It's interesting. We've been doing these phone calls for a while and, and have, have had a bunch of interviews with people. And uh, at the end of the day, we're all human. We all have different struggles. And, right. uh, you know, if, if you can, you know, I'm, I'm just proud of you for recognizing your, your, you know, your weaknesses, but, also recognize what you've accomplished in your strengths too, because that's that's uh, pretty impressive what you've done. Thank you. What are you hearing? What's that? What are you hearing in this? Because you're the one with the answers. Uh, well, you're gonna, and I'll I'll yeah. guide you a bit. But what are you hearing? Yeah. Well, I, I'm hearing that you know it's okay. You know, it, it's okay to be where I'm at, and it's also okay to it's okay to fail. You know, I mean, it, it it's okay. You know, I can I can do it. I can let people come in and help me because I can't I can't know everything. I can't I can't grow on my own anymore. You know, because at some point you you need some help, and you know, I, and 
it's exactly what I need. I need to be, I need to accept the fact that I'm human. I mean, Ryan, you hit the nail on the head. I'm, I'm human. I try not to be, I try to be superhuman, but you know, unfortunately, yeah. I'm not. Right, Ryan, I'm going to disclose know. on you a little bit. You're, you're a selfless person. I, I tend to be more self-centered. I have to pull back and be more selfless, right? Mm. But my tendency is toward the self-centered side. And, and you two are more of the selfless side. And there's, there's a point where you give up so much that you won't ask for help. when You need it the most because you're the helper. Like, I'll just take right. care of it. I'll do it on my own. But you just hit on it. Like, for you to ask for help... Don't, you don't do that, that. No. I give, I give no, help. I don't take help. Can I can I interject something real quick? Yeah, yeah absolutely. For sure. One thing that just struck my brain too is as you're you know debating on whether to take this new position or or this new role at work and and whatnot, wondering if you're qualified. The the you know your boss thinks you are, so uh, I would imagine that you are. The thing that I would I would highly look at and um, is you you have a team of probably a bunch of good people people that are good at their jobs come to work and work oh, yeah. hard and want to want to have a yep. successful career. You you don't have to make that for them. You don't have to be the guy for all of those people. They sh they need to show up and do their job too. And one thing that right. I was to help you have them help you. It can't, keep, keep, that kept coming to my mind is, is too and say, guys, look, I'm, I'm going to do the very best I can. I'm going to show up and I expect you guys to as well, but to succeed right. for all of us, I'm, I'm going to lean on you. I need your help. Sometimes I don't know everything, you know, so right. need your help and it's okay to express that to those people and what it might do. It doesn't always do it, but what it might do is it might rally them behind you and go, look, mm -hmm. you know what? looking out for us too i'm gonna help him i'm gonna make him look right. good you know in that position yeah for sure and so um anyway that just kept coming to my mind is that you have the tools you have you have the skills and ability you just need to change you know some learned behaviors and it's gonna take right. time and it's gonna take oh you know, it's gonna take some resilience and some effort but you can do it and you can have other people help you I've had to pull back. Nick, Nick had talked to me. About, you can do it, and you can have other people help you. I've had to pull back. Nick, Nick had talked to me about uh, uh, about pulling back yesterday. Actually, about mm -hmm. I give, 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 and and then I feel like right. I'm not pushing what I want to accomplish, and I've got to be a little bit more choosy about who I'm helping and who I'm giving to, so that I can I can feel good, you know. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny that you say that because I, you know, Thursday night I get a phone call from a friend saying, Hey, I need some help moving tomorrow. I was like, all right, I'm in, you know, and I spent all day moving her, you know, without, without question. It was just like, all right, I'm there, you know, and I didn't get things done that I needed to do for myself. You know, things that I wanted to do on that day, didn't get done and you know now that I, I sit back things that I wanted to do on that day didn't get done and you know now that I, I sit back and I think about it it's like yeah I, you know I sacrificed myself for that you know for for friends that would they do the same I don't know so you know it, Nick you talked about that Saturday <laughs> yep um <laughs> Ryan will go and do do work on his own, and he won't even. I won't even know about it, you know. Or if I called Ryan, I said, "Hey, yes. I need some help." He'll drop everything and come help, regardless of what he had planned. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a great friend to take advantage of. Right? <laughs> right. But you deserve to be selfish. It's okay to be selfish. There is a balance between selflessness and selfishness. Right. And you get to decide where you give and where you take. And you do, you do, right. you 
know, and, and uh, even in relationships, what I'm, what's coming to mind for me is in your relationship, your idea that you might leave other behind. You know, it might be at work, but I'm thinking more at home when you say that. Yeah. <laughs> that in a relationship, two individuals come together and they support each other, but they maintain their individuality. I'm not the one to give you relationship advice, but I can tell you how to get a divorce if you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. that, would be, <laughs> yeah. that would be to forget yourself. Right. Or, or to rely yeah. on another person so much that you don't realize that you have the power to be an individual. That's right. somebody else. Right? You and your wife both deserve to be individuals. You, you need to keep your lives separate in that sense. You can come together and support mm-hmm. each other, but it's a give and take. It's getting everything. And then that flip-flops, you know, where now she's giving everything and you're taking everything and she's not equipped to give. Right. And you're not equipped to take. It, it can just shake apart it, like the wobbles on a motorcycle at high speed. You know, it just it gets really edgy. You, you guys need to be right. balanced. So you need to have boundaries around what you give. doesn't mean you don't give. It just means right. you had stuff you needed to do. And you, you put it all aside for this other person in a heartbeat, dropped the hat, you know, dropped the ball on you. Right. That's the hardest yeah. thing for back too, by the way, because it just, you know, I've, I, I don't know why I feel that way, but I always feel like I have to give, 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 or they're not going to accept right. me. They're not gonna like me. They're not, you know, I need to buy their yeah. acceptance consciously. Like I'm not thinking that like at the forefront of my mind, but then right. if I, if I, if you would have said to this, this gal and Hey, look, I've got a lot going on too. I've got, you know, I can, I could, I could do a t- couple hours, you know, do you think you can right. get another another group of people to come help or can we do it on different days yeah. multiple days you know because i have to get these things done she respect right. that she'd take the two hours or the hour that you could give or whatever the time is now, if you had the whole day free right. and nothing going on and you wanted to do that then maybe that's okay but you know you gotta keep keep and look after your you too yeah for sure let me check in with you what are you hearing? I'm, I'm hearing that I, I need to, I need to create balance, you know, and I have to, I have to be willing to take as much. I'm, I'm hearing that I, I need to, I need to create balance, you know, and I have to, I have to be willing to take as much as I give, you know, um, and I have to put myself first in some situations, you know, I'm not, I, I always put everybody else first and we'll do everything that they need. And then if I have time, I'll get the stuff done that I need to do. Right. But do I make that time for myself? You know, I don't carve that out intentionally. So I need to, I need to do that. It's, it's the only way I can survive is by taking, you know, as much as I give. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's yes. jump back into the idea, you know, the, the big points that you were hitting on is the fear of not being able to perform on this new position, right? Yeah. And also the relationship, what if people leave me because I change? And both of those have been answered inside of this. And as mm-hmm. you reflect back, what answers do you hear about that? And I can share what I hear. I, I, well, I need to hear that I, I, well, I hear that I need to, I need to control those outcomes more and not be so reliant on people's need to need me. Um, you know, I, I have to, I have to be okay with putting my needs first, even if it means change, even if it means growth, you know, and again, if, even if it means, you know, falling on my face and, and, having to pick myself up again, um, I need to take control of that and create that balance. Okay. Okay. That's on, that's on relationship. So what about the performance? 
What about this new position? Well, I need to be confident in the fact that the, they came to me for a reason. And the, the conversation came up and I need to not drag my feet on it. You know, if, if the opportunity fully presents itself, I have to jump at it because I can do it. You know, I, I have the ability to do it. And I have to be okay with asking for help on the times that I can't. Um, you know, and, and just talking about the, the drag of my feet, you know, and, and holding myself back. The suggestion that I talked to the manager of that group was made about six months ago. And it took me up until, you know, just before the holiday to actually have that conversation. I kept thinking about it and I'd put it off. So I'd be like, oh, no, no, I don't, I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm, I'm good enough. I don't know if I'm ready. You know, I don't know if I'm, I'm good enough. I don't know if I'm ready. But finally, I just jumped. And I was like, let me just talk to him, see what happens. So, you know, I have to be confident in the fact that others have confidence in my abilities. I have confidence. Abilities. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, man. But, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what confidence we have in you. Right. Like if you lack that in yourself, it, there is no amount of confidence from an external source that would satisfy you. There you go. True. Here's, here's two Only components money. that I see. I'm going to paint some pictures here, okay? Sure, um, sure. And I like these analogies because they work. So when it comes to the job, I'm going to start there. I want you to picture a bus, and on that bus is seven-year-old you who is insecure. On that bus is seven-year-old you who is insecure, caretaker, trying to be a man in a child's body, right? Seven-year-old you is mm -hmm. on the bus, really scared, doesn't want people to see him. You're the driver of the bus. You're going to go into an interview, and seven-year-old you is going to throw a tantrum, in a sense, because it's, he's afraid. Right. He's the driver of the bus. And what I can promise you is that that seven-year-old you is going to come up frequently and is going to show up in a way that's it's going to be scared and need some reassurance that things are going to be okay, just like you're doing with this call. Right. And you are the driver of the bus. That makes sense. Yep. Like you don't want to kick Absolutely. him off the bus. You can't. You can't kick him off the bus. Right. He's you, right? He's a part of you. So let him throw his right. tantrum. Let him be afraid. Feel that anxiety as it comes up and, and, and you're in the meeting and you're like, I don't know if I can do this. That's the seven year old you talking. And I'm just picking an age. Okay. Yeah. But that's when your life was involved the most. Was it seven years yeah. old when your mom went to prison? Okay. Right that's where you had to start showing up like an adult in your life. Mm -hmm. And, and so when you're feeling that anxiety, like I'm feeling really insecure, that's where it's coming from. Right. Don't hide from that. Don't ignore it. Acknowledge it. Say, look, man, I get it. I get that feeling. I appreciate you telling me I'm not going to run away from you. Like I did in the past. Right. I'm going to drive the bus where I need to go so you can come along. Right. But just know I'm, I'm driving the bus this way. I'm in control of the bus. You throw your tantrum back there. Just know I love you. Right. And I'm not going away. Caretake in a sense of yourself. That's mm -hmm. the one analogy. Okay. Does that fit you? Yep. Absolutely. The other ones with your relationships. Okay. There's a tendency when you're completely selfless to go to the opposite extreme and be completely selfish, self-centered. Uh -huh. So I like the, the vision or the visual of Professor Hulk and the Avengers. Right. <laughs> you familiar? Yep. Okay, so you have the Hulk who just smashes and is angry. We'll call him selfish. You know, selfish is the Hulk. Right just takes everything and smashes everything and screw you, right? Right, and then right. Banner is smart and logical and caretakes and tries not to be the Hulk. But then you have this hybrid Professor Hulk that's a combination of the two that can be a complete dick and prick when he needs to be. But right. But also 
the most kind, loving person when he needs to be, all in balance. Never getting rid of right. any aspect because you need both. Absolutely. Does that fit with you? Yes, it does. Okay. That makes perfect sense. So I like stories and analogies because we can, we can jump into them and add our own narrative to them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's uh, those are, those are both really good analogies and I, I they, they fit, they fit exactly what I, what I battle, you know, on a daily basis. Cause I've got this, you know, I'm this bus and you know, I'm the bus driver and there's one kid on there and he's going ape shit, um, you know, and then I've got, Professor Hulk, you know, I'm trying to, trying to be the smartest person in the room without breaking everything. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like me. I, yeah. I would, so, I would bet that you know what to do from here. I do. I do. Clarify that for me. Yeah. Well, I need to, I need to be a bit more selfish. You know, I, I need to pull back on my, my giving. I need to learn to be a bit of a taker. And I have to be okay with making risks and taking those jumps. You know, these groups of faith that adults take. You know, I'm a grown man. I'm 38 years old. Yet I, I, I let the, the insecurity and the desire to fix everybody that was born at seven, I let that control more of my action or inaction as you so eloquently put it, uh, you know, so I need to, I need to take that jump. Or the seven-year-old kid, that we're going to be okay. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. Um, be forgiving of yourself. No, you're, you're going to fall back into old routines. It is a given. Yeah. Okay. That is going to happen pretty frequently initially. Um, in my book, right. did you get a copy of that, The Art of Accomplishment? I will, I will get a copy of that. We sent out a free copy. I'll get you a free copy in a PDF format or you can get it on Audible. Okay. But, yeah. But there's, there's two things in there I want to hit on. Uh, one is that you know, what, you, what, you, what you want out of life, you've got to be willing to suck at something long enough to get good at it. Right. Okay. The second one ties into that. And that's from Steve Hardison, one of my mentors, and he was teaching a kid to stop sucking his thumb. And the story, they wanted to stop the behavior, and so he shared that any time that the kid found his thumb in his mouth, it was kind of too late. He wasn't conscious, so there's not much that can be done with that. Your thumb's in your mouth. Right. But as you pay attention to it, there will be a, a chance for you to catch it coming up to your mouth, and you still might put your thumb in your mouth. But at least you're aware that it's coming up to your mouth. And then there's a point where you catch right. it coming up to your mouth and you stop it, right? right. And then with time right. and practice, you can just stop that. And then you, you stop putting your thumb in your mouth. Your thumb. And so yeah. trust that it's going to take some time for you to, to learn these new behaviors. And you're not going to be very good mm -hmm. at it at first. But you got to stick with it. And you got to be conscious yeah. long enough to make it an unconscious act. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. I don't know how long that's going to take. They say anywhere from 60 days up to 280 days to create a new behavior, a new habit. Right. I don't know where you're going to fall in. It might take you your entire life to create this into a new behavior. Are you willing it to may, suck at it? It may. Okay, good. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah no, I, it, it may, but it's, it's the only way to get past it. You know, and I, it, if, it, if it takes me the rest of my life to finally break it, then at least I can say that I did it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I don't, I don't have to be shackled by it, you know, by this, this fear and insecurity, you know, and I can, I can just break that, break that mold and, awesome. and get out of these habits. So awesome. you're, I'm you're in. Dealing with, you're, yeah, you're dealing with not only your behaviors, but generational behaviors. You're dealing with what your mom and dad taught you by their behavior. Right. You're also right. dealing with what they're 
you're also right. dealing with what their parents taught them that led to them acting out the way they did. True. So regardless of where it came from, you are aware. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we right. will uh, we'll press on. Yep. I'm going to give you a little tool uh, each day. What I'd invite okay. you to do is first thing in the morning or at night before you go to bed, you want to set an intention for the next day or that day, depending on which time of day you do it. Um, but I want you to write down one thing that you'll let go of, one behavior that you'll work on letting go of. I want you to be grateful for one thing in your life that's going right. You picked it. And then I want you to create an intention each day of what you'll work on that day. Just one thing. Okay. And being less giving. I'll set a limit on my giving. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Be committed to trying that out. Absolutely. Okay. Has this been helpful? Most definitely. Thank you. Welcome. Is there, is there something else that's coming up for you that you need to address? Um, not yet. Not yet. I think we've got uh, quite a bit uncovered, and you know, I, I have uh, I have some some clear work to do. You know, and this this helps okay. in in setting, you know, in setting things up because you know I can say yes, I need to do these things, but you know, this at least lays the groundwork. You know, to start doing that. So, I thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and You're just welcome. be patient right. with yourself. It's going to take, you know, if, if it comes up and the behaviors come up, be forgiving. It's going to take some time. Right. Okay. Okay. Ryan, did you have any additional I'm thoughts? Um, uh, no. No, I'm good. I'm, I, uh, thanks for the, thanks for, uh, that because it was like a mirror to myself so i learned some oh, things thank you thank you ryan i appreciate it man yeah buddy oh, that, that's it man we're gonna stop right there if that works for you okay yep you absolutely thanks guys thanks for being a part of the clear path training podcast we hope you found value in the podcast and please subscribe and tell your friends to do the same Help us take the taboo out of mental health. Until the next show, stay healthy, my friend.